Welcome back class, I'm Mr. Teacher with the SAT Math Video Guide. After a little bit of a break due to current exam joining anyways, um, today we will be starting on section 6 of test number 4 in case you're tuning in for the first time. Um, I realized I'm a big ummer during my absence, so let's just begin. The first question it gives us this equation. 3 plus diamond over 2 is equal to 7, 1 over 2, or half. So what number, when used in place of the diamond above, makes the statement true? Well, let's, well, first thing we need to do is we need to change this into an improper fraction, as now it's just a mixed number. So, Let's multiply 2 with 7 and add 1, so we get 15 over 2. 15 over 2 is equal to this weird equation of 3 plus diamond over 2. So we, the denominators are the same, so we don't really need to worry about those anymore. So our equation is now just 15 is equal to 3 plus diamond, and therefore... If we subtract 3 from both sides, diamond is equal to 12, and that is choice D. Uh, let's start the next question, and can I squeeze it in? I can squeeze it in. Number 2. Let's use a different color for that. Okay. Okay. And a transversal. Right. This is L, this is N. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. All right. So in the figure above, if L is parallel to M, then the sum of the measures of angles two and four must equal the sum of the measures of which of the following pairs of angles. And then there are a list of other angle pairs. So Let's circle out angles 2 and 4, which are right over here. So these are opposite angles, and according to the figure, um, the, the question, the figures are, the lines are parallel, line L and line M. So two, if 2 is equal to 4, well, on a side note, we know that 1 is equal to 3, 5 is equal to 7, and 6 is equal to 8, but... 2 and 4 are obtuse, obtuse, obtuse angles, lots of stumbles, and the only other obtuse angle pair then should be angles 6 and 8. It should be if the lines are parallel, and that is the correct answer, choice D. So, let's go to number 3, which has a chart. All right. So let's draw this chart really fast, and then woman, uh, can do better, then a total, then employed, I'm just going to write M for this unemployed and total again so these are connected like this all right this is 27,000 then 21,500 then 50,500 48,000 and that's all. All right. So, the table above describing the Preston City workforce is partially filled in. Based on the information in the table, how many women in the Preston City workforce are unemployed? So, now we just need to work backwards until we fill in the required cell. And we're looking for the unemployed women. So, this is the women row. And this is the unemployed column. So this is the cell that we are looking for. Now let's get started in deducing. So we can find the total of unemployed 
people. That's 50,500 minus 48,000, which is equal to 2,500. Then we can also find the total number of women who are employed right here, which is 48,000 minus 27,000, which is equal to 21,000. And now we can find the unemployed because we have the total number of women and the employed women, the number of employed women. So total minus employed, 21,500 minus 21,000 is equal to 500. And that's the correct answer. That's choice A. Now, number four is a word problem, which, let me read it out. A group of students washed cars to raise money. The net amount A in dollars raised by washing K cars is given by the function A of K is equal to 4K minus 30. If the group washed 15 cars, what is the net amount they raised? So, the college board is hiding a subtle joke here of internet jokes. So the function is a of k is equal to 4k minus 30. This function shows the net amount of in dollars raised by washing k cars. So the group washed 15 cars and that's the number of cars washed. So if we plug 15 into the equation, a of 15 will be equal to 4 times 15 minus 30, which is equal to 60 minus 30, which is equal to 30. So they earned $30 from washing 15 cars, which is choice E, and I wouldn't say that's a bad amount. So number 5 has plenty of mini equations. If XR is equal to V, V is equal to KR, and RV is not equal to zero. Which of the following is equal to K? Well, let's list out these first, e first equations again, a bit more side by side in a column. XR is equal to V. KR is equal to V. That's just the second equation switched over. So they're the same. So XR is equal to KR, and I realize my X and Ks look pretty similar. Anyways, so let's divide both sides by R to get rid of them. So X is equal to K, and so K is equal to X. That's choice D. Now let's do one more before we end it off, maybe. Um, the eggs in a certain basket are either white or brown. If the ratio of the number of white eggs to the number of brown eggs is 2 over 3, each of the following could be the number of eggs in the basket except. Okay, so the ratio of white eggs to brown eggs is 2 to 3. And in a ratio, to find a total number of whatever you're trying to count, you need to add the, the numerator and the denominator since those are just proportions. So 2 plus 3 is equal to 5. So the number of white eggs according to this equation is 2 over 5. The number of brown eggs is equal to 3 over 5. And let's just say the number of total eggs is equal to something like y. So 2 fifth of y, 3 fifth of y. So we know then that the total number of eggs has to be a multiple of 5 because you you can't have 12 eggs and then divide them into five separate parts. You would be breaking eggs if you did that. And that's obviously not allowed. You wouldn't be able to do it properly anyways. It would take you forever. So the only number here that's not a multiple of five is choice number B, which is 12. So actually, I think I can do one more. I can even do it right here. So number seven is... If 18 root 18 is equal to r root t, that sort of messed up, where r and t are positive integers and r is greater than t, which of the following could be the value of r times t? Now, this is what sometimes messes up um, any student, really, once they're having a perfect run throughout the entire section, because, wait a minute, 18 is not greater than 18, 
But if you notice, 18 can also be factored down further. So it can, this can be equal to 18 root 2 times 9. Then we can cancel it a bit further. Eight, this can be equal to 18 root 2 times 3 times 3. And you square 9, then you can take out the 3. So this crosses off. So it's equal to 3 times 18 root 2. 3 times 18 is 54 root 2. So now it actually makes sense because the question says r is greater than t. Indeed, 54 is greater than 2. Now we need to find the product of these two numbers. So 54 times 2 is 108, and that's choice C. Okay, I hope this helped you with your SAT preparation, math, SAT math preparation, and I will see you in the next video. Hopefully it comes out pretty soon.